Hello, and welcome back to Animated Literacy. This is lesson number 50 from the Story, Song, and Action book. In this lesson, we're going to be learning the story, the song, the sound, and the gesture for Lulu Moose in a few moments. Before that, we'll do a bit of review. In our last character lesson, we learned about Nellie Newt and how Nellie Newt lives with her mother Nina in her nest of made with napkins and newspapers where Nina tells Nellie, don't nibble in your nest, but Nellie hides her nuts and noodles in the napkins and newspapers. And what does she do? She nibbles while she's supposed to be taking a nap at noon and going to bed at nine o'clock at night. So whenever we think of Nellie Newt, think of nibbling. Show your big teeth that you used to nibble with, like this, with a big smile, and wiggle your fingers in front of your mouth and go, mmm. Now, if we put Nellie Newt's sound, into Are You Sleeping, it's going to sound like this. Are you nibbling? Are you nibbling? Nellie Newt, Nellie Newt. Nellie's bells are saying, Nellie's bells are saying, ning nong ning, ning nong ning. And if a uh, frog goes ribbit ribbit, what's Nellie's frog going to say? Nibbit nibbit. And if our lamb goes ba ba. Nellie's lamb's going to do what? Na na. So let's try some of those. Are you nibbling? Are you nibbling? Nellie Newt, Nellie Newt. Nellie's lamb is saying, Nellie's lamb is saying, na na na, na na na. How about using lamb in our puppy dog song? Little lamb, she says, ba, ba, ba. Nellie's lamb, she says, na, na, na. In our last drawing lesson, we drew a picture of a hen because it ends with Ellie, Nellie Newt's sound. And a hen, when it eats, it goes peck, 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 peck all around the farm. So we are going to use peck for our hen. Little hen, she goes peck, peck, peck. Nellie's hen, she goes neck, 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 neck. Let's try some of our other sounds with our hen. If that hen is Timmy Tiger's hen, what does it say? Show me tickling. Tech, 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 tech. If it's Polly Pandas, what does it say? Peck, 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 peck. And if we're dancing with Daisy Dragon, what does the hen say? Deck, 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 or deck, deck, deck. If it's Lizzie Lamb's hen and she's laying on her lemon leaves, what's the hen saying? Leck, 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 leck. If it's the thick thorny things hen and he's thirsty, what's the hen saying? Theck, 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 theck. If it's Gilda Goose, What's it saying? Gek, 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 gek. Now if we switch back to our lamb, what's our lamb going to say for rosy raccoon? Instead of ba ba, it's going to go ra, ra, ra. And if it's Jenny Jaguar, jaw, jaw, jaw. And if it's Mimi Mermaid, ma, ma, ma. Now if we switch that over to our cowboy, and our cowboy's going, yee-haw. Now what's our cowboy saying for Mimi Mermaid? Me, ma. What's he saying for baby Barnaby bowing? Be, ba, be, ba. For Kimmy Kangaroo blowing kisses, ki, ka, ki, ka. And for Hippy Hippo humming, he ha, he ha. And for Sadie Seal surfing, seesaw. Seesaw. Have you ever ridden on a seesaw? And for Farley Fish Fishing, Fee Fa, Fee Fa, and Crazy Camel Crunching, Ki Ka, Ki Ka, and back to Nellie Newt. For nibbling, it's going to go Ni Na, Ni Na. Let's try a few of our vowel sounds today. I brought with me a new food to play with the sound of, and this is a squash. So how many syllables are in squash? Squash. Just one syllable. So if Edgar Elf 
were to eat that squash, and here he is exercising, going, eh, what's the squash going to say? Squish, squish. And if we were using a tomato, how many syllables were in tomato? Tomato. And if we use eh in each syllable, what's it going to be? Te, me, te. Say that. Te, me, te. And if we put our squash and our tomato into apples and bananas with Edgar Elf, it's going to sound like this. Edgar likes to et, 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 squash and tomatoes. Edgar likes to et, 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 squash and tomatoes. What if we change that to Ollie Ostrich? And well, here we go. Ah, to the doctor. Ready? So a squash is going to be what? Squash. So it just stays the same. But a tomato is going to do what? Ta ma ta. And if we put that into apples and bananas, how's it going to sound? All he likes to ot, 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 squash and tomatoes. All he likes to ot, 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 squash and tomatoes. Okay, well, after our last lesson, we talked about going back and doing more drawing on your own and more labeling. So this is a page I did after our last lesson and we had learned how to draw a hen. So I described my hen with the word red and here's the word red pointing to the hen. And then we rhymed with hen with our pen and I made the pen blue. So now I've got the word blue pointing to the pen. Then we drew a picture of a nut that has Nellie Newt's sound and I made the nut tan, then drew a picture of a man, and I thought, guy, that man looks kind of funny. So I decided instead of using a color word to describe the man, we used the adjective funny. So I've got a funny man, but I used another color word for his pants. So he has what color pants? Green pants. And we drew a picture of an ant that has Nellie Newt sound in it. And this is a red ant. And if that ant was joined by its friends and it found this man's pants, he'd have what? Ants in his pants that rhymes but is not very comfortable. Then after we drew and labeled all of these different pictures, we wrote a sentence about it. And so on my page, I wrote this sentence, Will the red hen eat the nuts? Then I gave a title and I put my title inside a frame surrounded by bamboo and I titled the picture fun in the sun because these are all kinds of things that you can do when the sun is out and it's a really nice day so each day when we draw we're starting to add to our word wall and all of these pictures have Nellie Newt's sound in them except for hut but since it's a nut hut it still uses that Nellie Newt sound when we're describing it so when you go back to draw, you can draw as few or as many as you're comfortable with. So if you're just starting out and you only want to draw one picture, but you want to draw it over and over again and you want to write that word over and over again, that's fine. But as you're getting further and further along, you want to do more and more drawing and you want to pay a lot of attention to all the sounds and all the letters in each word so that you can use these words to help you read all of the other kinds of words that you're going to be finding in books. So in today's lesson, we're going to be talking about Lulu Moose. And here's my Lulu Moose. And she's all dressed up for a birthday party. So we're going to talk about now the different topics that you can discuss with your parent and teacher and read books about. So the first one is, what do you know about a moose? Well, I was doing some studying about a moose before going into this lesson. And so... As I read about a moose, I found some interesting facts about a moose. And one of those was people like to identify a moose as having antlers. Well, it turns out it's only the boy or the male ant moose that has antlers. And they don't have them all year round. The, turn, the antlers look kind of scary, but moose don't really use those antlers to protect themselves. They use them to get the girls to like them. And it seems like the girls like the moose that has the most interesting antlers. So in the spring, when they're out looking for a girlfriend, 
they grow these great big antlers. And then in the winter time, when they're not looking for a girlfriend, they lose their antlers and then the next spring they grow their antlers back again. Um, this moose is playing a flute and so we're going to be talking about flutes. And so another thing that I found interesting about the moose is the name moose came from Native Americans that live up in the Northeast and, and in Canada. And in their native language, the word moose means twig eater. And so moose eat like to eat twigs, and that's right in their name. So now we're going to have to find out how this is Lulu moose, but she has antlers. How is that that a girl moose could possibly have antlers? And you'll have to listen to my story to find, to find that out. Here's some interesting books about a moose. So you can talk about with your parent or teacher, what would it be like if a moose moved into your house? And that's exactly what happened in both of these stories. And this one is called Moose on the Loose. And this one is called The Useful Moose. And these are both Skybrary stories and they're both really funny. So you can have a really good time reading about the moose in those stories. Now it also turns out that when you have more than one moose, we don't change the word. So we don't have mooses and we don't have meese. We can have one moose or two moose or three moose or a hundred moose and it still says moose. And the reason for that is in the native language where the word moose came from, they didn't change it. And so when moose came into the English language, it just stayed moose, whether it's just one or whether it's more than one. So that's kind of an interesting word that way. This is a book about Morris the Moose, and there's quite a few stories about Morris the Moose, so you might want to read about those. We also are going to be talking about teeth in our story. And it turns out that just like people, a moose gets baby teeth, and boys and girls usually start losing their teeth along about five or six years old. Well, a moose first loses its baby teeth at just over one year old when they were about 14 months old. So a year is 12 months and they lose their teeth when they're about 14 months old. So that's another going to be another part of our story. And so you can learn about tooth tales. And this is a book that tells about people all over the world and how they celebrate when they lose their teeth. And many of us know about the tooth fairy. In some places there's a tooth mouse. And there's a whole bunch of different ways that people celebrate the loss of, of a tooth and the growing in of a new tooth. And of course, when you're taking care of your teeth, you have to go to the dentist. And so this is a good Skybrary book about what you can expect when you go to the dentist. This is another book about losing teeth. And it's called Throw Your Tooth on the Roof. And that's because in some places when they lose their teeth, they throw them on the roof. I don't know why they would do that, but if you read in this book, you might find out why. Now, I mentioned that Lulu Moose was dressed up for her birthday, and so that's another topic that you can talk and read about with your parents and your teachers. And so this is a Skybrary book that's called The Best Birthday Gift. And so this is about somebody trying to give somebody the very best gift. And I mentioned that Lulu Muth is playing a flute. So this is a Skybrary book about flutes. And this boy has a flute, a very small flute called a penny whistle. And when he plays it, somebody hears it and they go, oh, I play a different kind of flute. And so they join in with Henry. Then somebody else comes along and they have a different kind of flute. And pretty soon you have a parade of all of these different kinds of flutes. And there are many, many different kinds of flutes. So you can learn about those in this book. So now in our story about Lulu Moose, here's Lulu, and she can't wait to have her very loose tooth because that's a sign that she's growing up. So she hopes and hopes and hopes that that loose tooth will come. Well, hers comes a little bit early. Instead of waiting until 14 months old, her loose tooth comes when she's 12 months old or just one year. So it's about her birthday time when she gets that very first loose tooth. And at first she's really excited about that tooth, but then she gets kind of scared when she thinks about what might happen when that tooth comes out. 
So she goes to talk to her mom about her loose tooth. And her mom reminds her that dad loses his antlers every winter and grows a new set every summer. And so that's kind of like the loose tooth that underneath there's a new tooth coming up and it's pushing that baby tooth out so that the permanent tooth will have a place to come in to the mouth. And to help her get her mind off being afraid of her tooth, she even lets Lulu play with her dad's antlers. And so she goes off to play dress up and have a good time with the antlers. So then she begins to open her presents and her first birthday present that she falls in love with is a new blue flute. And so she puts it in her mouth and she's tooting her flute and she's dancing around the house and she's having a great time. But she was so excited about the flute and about wearing her dad's old antlers that she forgot to tie her shoes. And so as she's dancing through the house, she trips on one of those shoelaces. And as she trips on the shoelace, the flute comes up and it bumps right into her loose tooth and out comes the tooth. So now she's so excited that she has them put that tooth on a string and here's her tooth on, um, around her, her neck on the string so that she won't lose it and she can put it under her pillow. So she's real careful to hide that tooth under the pillow and the next morning the tooth fairy leaves another present for her to open. What do you think she got? So that's our story for Lulu Moose. So now whenever we think of Lulu Moose, we think of having a loose tooth. We put our finger up to our mouth like this. We pretend like there's a loose tooth behind it. Now you don't have to put your finger in your mouth. You can just put it in front of your mouth and move it up and down like this and go, ooh, for that loose tooth. So now if we put that into, are you sleeping? It's going to sound like this. Is your tooth loose? Is your tooth loose? Lulu moose. Lulu moose. Lulu's bells are saying. Lulu's bells are saying. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Is that a vowel or a consonant? Vowel. How do you know? Because all we have to say is Lulu's sound. She doesn't have to have anything to go with it. What happens if we use our drum with Lulu? Or is your tooth loose? Is your tooth loose? Lulu moose, Lulu moose, Lulu strum is saying, Lulu strum is saying, ooh, 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 ooh. So it doesn't matter if it's a bell, or if it's a drum, or if it's a hen. What would Lulu's hen say? Ooh, ooh, ooh. Because vowels stand alone, it doesn't matter what we put with them, that sound's going to stay the same no matter what object we place with it. So now, like all of our other characters, Lulu has a special song to sing. And so we're going to echo that song back. So I'll sing and show you the gesture and sing and say it after me. Ready? So pretend like you've got a flute, hold it up in front of your mouth like this, and you have to put your finger in the holes in the flute to make the different tones. So here's my flute. While tooting on her new flute, while tooting on her new flute, Lulu bumped a loose tooth. Lulu bumped a loose tooth. Now show me the new tooth coming up. A new tooth was about to come. A new tooth was about to come. Out came the loose tooth. Out came the loose tooth. Now Lulu Moose has more ways to spell her sound than just about any of our other characters. So let me get Lulu's picture back here again, and we can look at all of the different ways that Lulu Moose can spell her sound. She can spell it with O-O, she can spell it with U-I, she can spell it with O-U, she can spell it with U-blank-E, she can spell it with E-W, and she can spell it with U-E. I don't know any other sounds that can be spelled that many different ways. So we're going to sing about those now. So first we're going to sing about O-O. So sh show me your two O's like this. O O is for O O spells the O in tooth. O O spells the O in tooth. Now we're going to make an O and a U. O U spells O in Lulu. O U spells O in Lulu. Now we're going to make a U and an E. 
U E spells the U in flute. U E spells the U in flute. Now we need to make an E and a W. E W's for new tooth. E W's for new tooth. Let's try that once more, then we'll do it with our recording. Ready? While tooting on her new flute, while tooting on her new flute, Lulu bumped a loose tooth. Lulu bumped a loose tooth. A new tooth was about to come. A new tooth was about to come. Out came the loose tooth. Out came the loose tooth. O oh, O oh, spells the O in tooth. O oh, O oh, spells the O in tooth. O oh, U spells O in Lulu. O oh, U spells O in Lulu. U E spells the O in flute. U E spells the O in flute. E double U's for new tooth. E double U's for new tooth. Now let's see if you can do all those gestures. There's a lot of sounds and a lot of gestures in this one while I point to the words. Ready? While tooting on her new flute, Lulu bumped a loose tooth. A new tooth was about to come. Out came the loose tooth. Oh, oh, spells the oo in tooth. Oh, you spells oo in Lulu. U e spells the oo in flute. Or okay, so now when you get your picture of Lulu Moose, you can rainbow write over all those different ways to spell her sound. And then when you turn it over on the back, you have a lot of topics you can that you can write about. You can write about what it would be like if a moose came to live you with you in your house like it did in the, in the Skyberry stories that I showed you earlier. Um, you could write about what you know about real moose. You could write about losing your first tooth, what it feels like. Um, were you excited or were you scared like Lulu was? What did you do with that tooth after you lost that tooth? Um, you could write about a flute or another instrument that you might like to play. Um, so there's a lot of different things that you can write about on the back of your page and draw me draw a picture of and I hope you enjoyed that story of Lulu Moose. The next time you come we're going to be learning to draw and label some things that use Lulu's sound and some of the ways that she can spell her sound. So I hope to see you in our next lesson.